Chapter 1. My stepsister is Eki. What is an Eki story? There are many ways to describe it, but there must be an element of lewdness within that story. While some of them might be cliches, as long as one is a man, there is no doubt that they will be attracted to it since it is within their nature to be attracted to such an element. Still, if there is no example, it will be difficult to imagine such an element, right? However, fortunately, in this country, there were many cliches of such a situation, for example, of an ecky situation like how one entered a bathroom and then saw a naked girl. Watching the bare whiteness of a girl's body, the boy would be panicked and embarrassed before being bashed by the girl. However, in reality, such a thing hardly existed except if the relationship between two people was intimate to each other. If the relationship between two people wasn't intimate, then one should be ready to be treated as a perverted, then either blackmailed or called by the police. Yet, fortunately, such a troublesome situation didn't happen to him. Watching his naked reflection in the mirror, Mizuto Irido felt that everything was incredible. Frankly, it had been one year since he was transmigrated into this body. Even though it was incredible and something amazing that usually only happened in the novel, he quickly accepted it since, like how cliché Eki's situation usually could be predicted by the people. His situation was also cliché since after he died in his previous life, he was reincarnated into a new body. Still, if there was something that he wanted to complain about, he hoped to be reincarnated from when he was a baby instead of being in the third year of middle school. When he was reincarnated, he was afraid, wondering what the family of this young man would think and wondering how to integrate into his new life. However, fortunately, his worry was meaningless. First and foremost, he gained all the memories of the previous Mizuto so he could integrate easily without worrying about anything. Moreover, after he was transmigrated, his memory and brain improved, which made his life easier, especially for him to learn all the necessary knowledge for a student. Yet, this wasn't all since his body became stronger and healthier. With all of those new talents, he didn't waste them and used them well since it would be stupid of him if he didn't use them. Secondly, he didn't have friends. Yes, the original Mizuto didn't have a friend, so it was easier for him to integrate into this body. It was a sad fact, but it was a good thing for him. Thirdly, while it was kind of a sadder fact, his family was only his father, and the relationship between the father and the son wasn't that close. This was a good thing, so even if he became this person, his father didn't really notice the change in him. Moreover, his father often went on business trips, so they hardly met each other. However, as he had become the son of this father, he hoped to have a good relationship with his father, so during this past year, the relationship between father and son was quite good. It was also why he didn't say much and even supported his father when his father told him he would remarry and give him a stepmother. Still, hearing the word stepmother made him feel weird and giddy for some reason. He knew that it was kind of wrong, but it couldn't be helped, right? Also, as a son, wasn't it natural for him to have a good relationship with his stepmother? Nevertheless, this matter aside, the problem was that the original Mizuto had a girlfriend. This was troublesome since he knew that the way he treated his girlfriend and the way the original Mizuto treated his girlfriend was different. So, when he became Mizuto, he didn't hesitate to break up with this girl. At that time, he could see she was so sad, crying, staring at him in silence while asking him why, but in the end, he didn't say anything and his decision didn't change as he knew how that it was impossible for them to be together. While he had to admit that Mizuto's girlfriend was cute and the feeling of taking the girlfriend of another was quite interesting, he wasn't the original Mizuto, so he didn't have feelings toward this girlfriend. Moreover, he was afraid that this girlfriend would notice he had changed, so he directly cut all of his relationships except for his family. One year was enough for him to integrate, and as a middle school student, it was normal for him to change, as many things could happen to a teenager. Still, one year had passed, and he was about to become a high school student. His life as a high school student was about to start. Still, it seemed that his life as a high school student wouldn't be smooth, especially when he got a surprise after he became a high school student. A great evil is sweeping over the realm. You have been chosen as someone who will face this great evil. A hero must be born to face this catastrophe. 
From the highest towers to the depths of the underworld, through forests and deserts alike. Having deadly fights and defending the helpless from the Ravagers. Will you be willing to become such a hero and walk toward a noble end? Yes slash no. At first, he was dumbfounded, but he also quickly calmed down since he knew this was also a cliché development. However, there was one big problem. Isn't this a normal world? He didn't see the existence of the crisis except for a declining birth rate and an aging population in this country. Nevertheless, it didn't stop him from accepting the system, and when he accepted it, he could see his status. Name, Mizuto Irido. Level, 9. Job, Novice. It was said that when he reached level 10, he could change his profession, so he anticipated what kind of profession that he could change into. Still, he had to say the system was like an MMORPG game that he often played before. Yes, your bravery is worthy of commendation. At the same time, as you have the power of the hero, you will also have the power of the Demon King. So walking into the path you believe is good or bad is nothing but two sides of the same coin. He wondered how to raise his level as there were no monsters such as a goblin, an orc, or a dragon in this world. But before he graduated, he was confessed by many girls, and somehow, his level rose. So, you take down a woman instead of a monster? Yet, even if he didn't do anything, the experience would continue to rise even if it wasn't much. Still, if he did something commendable and extraordinary, such as being confessed to or other things that typically couldn't be experienced by people, then his level would increase at speed, like when he hunted down an elite or boss type of monster. Unfortunately, he only got the system when he graduated from middle school, so he couldn't level up to level 10. Yet, he knew when he became a high school student, there would be many chances for him to raise his level. Still, this system wasn't the only surprise when he became a high school student. As he fell into a deep thought, suddenly, the bathroom door opened. Like in a cliché Eki story, when one wanted to take a bath, they would see a naked girl when they were about to enter the bathroom. What was different was that he was the one whose naked body was seen. Mizu. He turned and saw a beautiful girl standing before the door, staring at him in a daze before looking down and unable to look away. An anaconda. Yum chan what's wrong? Why did you shout all of a sudden? Suddenly, another voice came in, and a beautiful mature woman also walked behind her daughter before she was startled and stunned when she saw what was inside the bathroom. W.O.W. Yes, not only did he get the system, but he also got a stepsister and a stepmother. What was even more impressive was that this stepsister was his former girlfriend. Now, an ecky situation has happened to him. Should he shout and call them perverts? Congratulations, you have become level 10. Please choose your job according to your preference. He took a deep breath, calmly took the white tower before wrapping his lower body, and looked at the two awkwardly. Can you close the door, please? The two nodded shyly and awkwardly before quietly closing the door. Kaya, Eki. He had always wanted to say that line. I am not Eki. Mimizuto Kuen, I am sorry. Well, his mood was good as he became a level 10, so it didn't matter that he became level 10, he thought to give them a fan service. Chapter 2. Perfect job. This sausage is huge. Is this bratwurst? I am sorry for only cooking frozen food. While the mother tried to answer, her face turned red, blushing. She stared at the bratwurst on her plate and thought about what she had seen. At that moment, she knew that she needed to maintain her calm as she was an adult and stepmother, but she couldn't help but compare this bratwurst to her stepson's. As for her daughter, she didn't say anything and just lowered her head, blushing while glancing in the direction of her former boyfriend. She could feel her entire body was hot and... It's okay. It tastes good, but Mizuto's food is also nice. Miniaki Irido looked at his son and said with excitement, Mizuto, how about you cook something for all of us tomorrow? The Chinese food that you cooked last time was good. There aren't many ingredients in the fridge, so I need to buy them tomorrow, Mizuto answered cautiously as he watched the television while eating his dinner. The fight between Dio and Jotaro was about to reach its climax, so how could he have time to talk with others? Muda, 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 Ora, 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 
Aura. As for the previous embarrassment, all of them have been forgotten by him due to the intensity of the fight between Dio and Jotaro. You. Miniaki looked at his son helplessly, then looked at his new wife. I am sorry for him, Yunisan. No, no. It's okay. I am happy that he can act like this since the shows that he has treated us as a family. Yuni Ayai, Mizuto's stepmother, smiled happily when she saw how relaxed Mizuto was when they were together. Watching her stepson, who ate dinner as he was engrossed in watching an anime, she felt that this might be how it felt to have a boy, but she knew as Mizuto was a teenager, there was something that she needed to watch out for, such as knocking before entering since it felt so awkward to see her stepson's naked body. But Mizuto Kuen, you should eat your dinner before watching television. Okay. Mizuto answered and ate as fast as possible while glancing at his stepmother. He had to say his stepmother was such a beauty with a gentle and ripen-like charm. Her height wasn't tall and could even be said to be petite as she was even shorter than her daughter, yet even so, it was impossible to mistake her for a teenager as the charm of a wife and a mother exuded from her body. With her hair tied in a ponytail and light makeup on her face, he understood why his father was smitten by his stepmother. Still, when their eyes met, Yuni blushed and lost her calm as she recalled what she had seen in the bathroom previously. Cough. Cough. Yuni-san. The food stuck in Yuni's throat, and Miniaki quickly gave a glass of water to his new wife. Yuni quickly accepted the glass and then looked gratefully at her new husband. Thank you, Miniaki-san. No problem. As the two talked, Mizuto noticed how Yuni wanted to talk with Miniaki as she seemed to wish to forget what she had seen previously. Knowing this, he had to say his stepmother was cute, but he knew that this woman was a big no-no since it was impossible to do anything to his stepmother, especially when this was the mother of his former girlfriend. No, the former girlfriend of the original Mizuto. Mizuto then glanced at this former girlfriend. Ayayum. No, it should be Amirado now, as she became his stepsister. Still, unlike before, Yum had become a beauty like her mother. According to the memory of the original Mizuto, Yum was quite petite, had almost non-existent breasts, wore glasses, and appeared like a bookworm or a girl who usually sat behind the class and was ignored by everyone. However, as she became a third grader in middle school, her body started to develop, and her appearance also began to change after she made friends. Not only did she take off her glasses and wear contact lenses, but her pigtail hairstyle was no longer there as she let her hair down like a model in a magazine. She had become a different girl than was once dated by the original Mizuto. As their eyes met, Mizuto smiled softly, causing Yum to blush and look away before stomping her feet in annoyance. While Mizuto shrugged his shoulders as he learned about the system while eating, Yum looked at Mizuto, who appeared nonchalant once again. She had never thought that her former boyfriend would become her stepbrother, yet what annoyed her was his calm and mature attitude when he knew they would become step-siblings. Was she the only one who held the feeling between them that he could be so nonchalant about all that happened between them? Was she nothing but other girls whom he was close with during the third year of middle school? There were many questions that she wanted to ask him, but she knew that the fact that they dated once had to be kept secret, especially when her mother just gained new happiness, and she didn't want to break it. With that thought, she knew she needed to talk with him since she didn't want him to talk nonsense, especially about their past to their parents. While she knew that he wasn't that kind of person, it wouldn't be hurt to make sure, right? So, Yum lowered her head again and blushed, thinking about what she would do tonight. Still, watching how much he had changed, she was at a loss, and she also wanted to know what he thought about her. Staring at his profile from behind, she couldn't take her eyes off of him as she recalled their previous memories. However, Yum had to say she felt annoyed when Mizuto ignored her due to the fight between Dio and Jotaru. Somehow, she wanted to shout, the world, before throwing a road roller in his direction. Mizuto wasn't sure what his stepsister was thinking, but he hoped Jotaro would win. Still, when the dinner was over, he didn't waste his time and returned to his room to change into a new profession. The fight between Dio and Jotaro might seem like it had distracted him, but the truth was, he had been learning more about the profession that he could change into. 
Yet, he had to say, there were many strange and unique jobs such as demon king, hero, assassin, warrior, mage, etc. Still, what was the use to change into such a job? This was a modern world where the ones with the money and authority were above everyone else. While he couldn't deny that being strongest would mean that he would be above everyone, too, he didn't want to become a criminal, and he also didn't want to bring negative effects to his family. Fortunately, there were other common jobs, such as merchant, musician, dancer, writer, chef, farmer, etc. However, it was also due to this that he wasn't sure what to do since he wasn't sure what kind of profession he should choose. Nevertheless, even though there were many professions, he couldn't choose them immediately as there was a requirement which he needed to complete. If he gave an example, if he wanted to become mechanic, he needed to become a blacksmith first. Still, he wouldn't choose a mechanic, so it didn't matter. With all of the choices that were presented before him, Mizuto knew that the best job that he had to choose was this one. Congratulations, you have become. Chapter 3. Merchant. Congratulations, you have become a merchant. As you have chosen to become, you can learn the merchant skills. Please follow the path of the merchant and become the greatest merchant on the continent. Merchant. This was the job he had chosen. While it lacked romance and realism, Mizuto knew that everyone needed money. Some might have said that money can't buy you happiness, but without money, you will die. If in the past the people gained everything with their power, in this current era, the people gained everything with money. While not many things can be bought with money, many things can be solved with money. Mizuto knew the importance of money, especially when he felt awkward using his father's money. Nevertheless, money wasn't his obsession, as his dream was to become a government employee and live by relying on the tax of people, becoming a parasite of the nation. Joke aside, if possible, he wished to become independent, and the fastest way was to get money. However, at his age, the only thing he could do to get money was to work a part-time job. Even worse, during middle school, he knew that he couldn't work as most places would only hire a high school student, so his only source of income was his father, who gave him monthly money to take care of the household. Using that money, he reduced the cost of everything within the house and took the rest for himself. His father didn't care about this, and sometimes, he even gave him a bonus. However, such a method was no longer possible as his father remarried, and he knew the household money would be given to his stepmother, which made him helpless. Still, it wasn't that he was in a truly helpless situation as he also had a new source of income, which was to create a thesis for a university student. With his brain, it was easy to learn, but he limited the thesis to economics and law as he was too lazy to learn the other knowledge. However, even with those two subjects, the money was great as those were popular faculties at the university. Moreover, his reputation was great, so one needed to pay at least 5,000 yen for each thesis page. If one thesis requires at least 50 pages, then he will get 250,000 yen for one thesis, which is the average monthly salary of a new employee. Naturally, this is a gray area, so he needs to be careful. Nevertheless, at his age, there were few things that he could do, and he also couldn't write a novel to make money like the protagonist usually does. As for stock and other financial things? You are joking. Instead of doing such a thing, he might as well save his money quietly and stably. Maybe some companies in the world were similar to his previous world, but he was still a student, and watching the screen to check the price of the stock every day was simply a burden for him. Making a thesis was good enough for him. No, that wasn't enough since his dream was to buy a house and retire before age 25, so he chose a merchant. Yet, he realized this job change was more impressive than he had thought. He didn't have an idea before as novice didn't give him anything, whether it was skills or benefits, except for the ability to open an inventory, which made him able to put or take out something from space storage like in the MMRPG game. But the moment he became a merchant, he gained seven skills. Two passive skills and five active skills. He gained two passive skills the moment he became the merchant, but for the five active skills, he needed to put the skill points, which he gained after he leveled up. Moreover, the level limit is level 50, huh? He is at level 10 now, and he gained 10 skill points. 
If he became level 50, he would gain 50 skill points. By then, he was able to complete a full lineup of merchant skills. But how long do I need to become level 50? He wasn't sure, so he knew he needed to treat those skill points carefully. Moreover, this was different from the game, so the useless skills in the game might have given him the most benefit in reality. Nevertheless, he decided to check the description of the skills from the passive skills first. Golden Luck and Overtime. Those were the two passive skills of the merchant. Golden Luck. A fate that attracts the life of the user to be filled with riches and continuously attracts wealth. Mizuto fell in silence and wondered whether he would be showered with a rain of money later, but luck or fate was something ambiguous. It was impossible to check whether luck really existed since one couldn't see it. Should I try the horse racing gamble? He felt it was a waste of time, and he might as well continue checking his skills. Over time, one's body will recover faster after a tough time working beyond one's scheduled working hours. In other words, his body would recover faster, right? It was a simple skill, but somehow it was beneficial. Nevertheless, it was time for him to check his five active skills. Identify, overcharge, discount, brainwash, and store. Those were the five active skills that he gained after becoming a merchant. He wanted to say that those skills were interesting, but the word interesting might not be appropriate as those skills were too impressive. Anyway, let's check them one by one. Identify. A skill used to appraise anything. What was the use of this? Frankly, there were many, especially when one tried to detect the fake or not. Mizuto knew that there were many strange things in the world, and for money, many people dared to do anything, such as selling food with used dirty oils or selling someone a fake egg. While he might not work in the food industry in the future, it wouldn't hurt to have this skill. However, he needed to figure out to what extent something or someone could be appraised. Was it only their names and gender? What about the other things? Many questions were on his mind, but he wanted to check the next skill first. Overcharge. Get more money after you sell your item. He was speechless at how amazing this skill was. If he went to sell something and someone bought it from him, then he would get more money. At level 1, the overcharge would give him 10% more money from the sales, and when it was level 10, it would give him 100% more money. So in other words, if he sold a 1,000 yen item, he would get another 1,000 yen. He would get a double paycheck. This skill was terrific, but he felt it was challenging to use it as he was still a student. Wait, then the price of the thesis can be doubled. With this skill, his customers would practically pay him twice the price. There was no doubt he would get more money, but he didn't want to put all of his skill points on the overcharge, especially when he hadn't checked the other skills. However, if there was a question that he wanted to ask, where would that money be sent? Would it be sent to his inventory or his bank account? Also, could he transfer the money from his inventory to his bank account? Lastly, was this money even legal? There were many questions, but he decided to think about those things later. Discount. Gaining a discount as long as you buy something. In other words, as long as I buy something, I will get a discount. Mizuto. However, it didn't mean the shop owner or the shop where he would shop would give him a discount straight away. Instead, the system would compensate him with the amount of discount and send him the money right away after he bought something. If he gave an example at level one of discount, he would get a 10% discount. So when he bought tea at the convenience store for 100 yen, he would get 10 yen in return from the system. Naturally, if the discount was at level 10, he would practically get something free since as long as he bought something, the money he used would be returned to him. Similar to overcharge, this discount skill was terrifying. Then, what about the next skill? Brainwash manipulate someone's mind. He felt that he had become a fearsome being somehow. If he didn't use his power well, he was afraid that he might really become a demon king. Nevertheless, even though this skill gave him the ability to manipulate someone's mind, it wasn't as scary as it was said. Moreover, at level one, this ability could only enhance someone's desire. It might be difficult to understand, but if he gave an example, it was like when you wished to buy something, but you hesitated due to various reasons. But with this skill, those hesitations disappeared, and you would buy the item you wished for immediately. Frankly, this skill was amazing, 
especially when it could be used to attract a customer, especially when he owned a restaurant, as he was sure that many people would be attracted to visit his restaurant. While he knew that it was wrong, as long as it was for profit, many merchants could do anything, right? Was it? How about we check the next reward first? Store. The ability to open a store. What is it? It felt strange, or was it like how the description was? Anyway, he fell in silence for a moment and made a decision to add one skill point to all five active skills to check the effect of each of those skills. Frankly, he was glad that he was in the room alone, so it gave him leeway to check about this system thoroughly, but after he put one skill point on each of the skills of the merchant, he heard a knock from the door. Who is it? He felt confused but decided to check who knocked on the door of his room. Walking from his bed, he opened the door and saw the person who had knocked on his door. He was familiar, yet also unfamiliar with this person, but for one thing, he wondered why she came to his room. Yum San Chapter 4 Per Yum, who heard her given name called by him, pursed her lips and blushed. Unlike before, his voice had changed from when they dated. His voice became heavy and low. Whenever her given name was called by that voice, it was like he showed his dominance, like she was unable to do anything, completely captivated as he did whatever he wished on her. The gentle and shy boy that she once loved was no longer there. Still, Yum took a deep breath as she stared at him, trying to intimidate him. Unfortunately, she was unsuccessful since their height difference was quite a lot. She was about 163 centimeters, and while she wasn't sure, he should be around 178 centimeters, right? However, there was something important that they needed to talk about, and this height of him was nice. Folding her arms, she stared at him haughtily. Mizuto Kuen, there is something that we need to talk about. No. Yes. Are you sure? Is there a problem? Are you doing something naughty inside? Yum tilted her head, trying to peek at his room to see criminal evidence. Unfortunately, his body was quite tall and developed, so it was hard for her to see anything from the gap between his sides. His lips twitched, and then he sighed. We might be siblings now, but we're step-siblings. What do you think if our parents see us together inside my room in the middle of the night? Yum was silent for a moment, then blushed before she accused him. Pervert. That should be my lines. Who peeked at me before? Th that was an accident. Then, who stared at my body before? Th that is an accident. Don't mention that anymore. Yum became agitated as he kept pressing her about the incident in the bathroom. Shuh. Be quiet. What if our parents hear us? Yum pouted, thinking that this guy had become a bad guy. So, do you still want to enter my room? Enter. I am going to enter your room. There was no hesitation, and she entered his room bravely while also looking at it curiously, thinking there were many changes in it. If something changed, it was the fact that he collected many fashion items such as sneakers and watches, which made her wonder whether he got the money from them as it definitely wasn't cheap to buy them. Moreover, where were his books? She still remembered that he had so many books that they filled almost every corner of his room, but now, while there were some books, the numbers were too few. Mizuto only shook his head before he closed the door, but when the door closed, he couldn't help but take a second glance at his stepsister. Unlike before, she really had grown up and weren't her clothes risque? Her clothes consisted of a shoulderless pink knitted sweater with purple chemise inside, as he could see two purple straps on her white, smooth shoulders. She also wore light-colored shorts that nicely wrapped around her plump thighs with tights that gave her enough warmth during the night, which somehow also enhanced the charm of her legs. Meanwhile, Yum's body tensed as she realized that they were alone and she could feel his gaze on her body. Her body started to sweat and she was also nervous, wondering whether he would push her down, but at the same time, she also felt happy secretly. Hmph. Did you just realize my charm? His words that day were still vivid in her mind as he decided to break their relationship. At that time, it was the beginning of the change in their relationship, and unlike when they were in the second grade, many changes happened between them when they became the third grade. However, instead of facing this problem together, he decided to stop their relationship, and they were no longer a couple. 
Still, this wasn't the worst thing. The worst was that he also changed and was no longer that loner who stayed in the library all the time. By then, many girls realized his good points and he became popular, especially when he became more handsome and fun to talk to. Was it growth? It was like her, who was petite and slender, then became taller and had a lascivious body. He should be the same. Still, unlike her, who was still thinking about their past relationship, he had forgotten it and spent his time with one new girl after another. While she knew that none of those relationships ended up dating as he wanted to focus on the entrance exam, in the end, during their graduation, she had heard that many girls confessed to him, which made her annoyed and angry. She knew that she didn't have a right to get angry, but it couldn't be helped, right? After all, was she the only one who thought of their relationship as special? Moreover, she was also angry at those girls who confessed to him since they never put their eyes on him, ignored him, and even talked bad about him, but then, they became crazy and fell for him. They were a bitch. Yum-san. Yum-san. Ah. Yum was startled and saw that Mizuto was by her side. Due to this, she lost her balance and was about to fall, but his hand grasped her waist tightly. Be careful. Yum felt her chest was stuffy, and she couldn't breathe, and her heart was beating so fast, which made her wonder whether she had caught a chronic disease. Yet, as they were so close, she couldn't help but think about the kiss that they shared many times when they were together. Unfortunately, when she closed her eyes, waiting for him, he didn't do anything and just patted her gently. Can you stand up now? Uh, yes. Yum then pouted once again since this guy was really annoying. How could he stay calm with all of this? Moreover, were his aggressive eyes just an illusion? She really couldn't read him. Nevertheless, Mizuto didn't care much about Yum's reaction and sat on the edge of the bed, looking at Yum, who stood before him. So what's wrong? Folding her arms, causing her breasts to swell and grow even bigger. Noticing his gaze again, her mood became better, thinking that this guy was a pervert. I can't endure it anymore. Mizuto blinked his eyes and asked weirdly, The toilet isn't here, you know? Yum blushed, embarrassed, and got a little angry. That's not what I mean. Then what? I mean, why did you have to call me by my given name? While she was complaining, her voice was like the purr of a kitten who asked for attention from her master. You don't like it? I don't hate it, but, but that's not what I mean. Then, what's the problem? Didn't you also call me Mizuto? It's different. It's different when I call you that. Mizuto knew that a woman was unreasonable, so it was useless to talk logic with them. When we were alone, Yum pursed her lips as if she didn't want to mention the past. When I was in middle school, I never let you call me by my given name. What else do you want me to call you then? We have the same name now, you know. Hearing that question, her expression became haughty, and she said, Of course, there is something else that is more appropriate, right? Mizuto rolled his eyes. Don't play a riddle with me. If you have something to say, then say it directly. Wani-chan. Huh. Because we're siblings, calling me Wani-chan is normal, right? He sighed and said, Our birthdays are on the same day, right? As if waiting for that question, she took out her smartphone and showed his picture as a baby. That's my picture? He was in doubt and wondered how she could get his picture as a baby. That's right. Yum nodded. You can see that you were born 30 minutes later than me, right? He felt a little scared of this girl as she had the potential to become a Yandera. In the future, if he had a different girlfriend, would she stab him? He felt his entire body cold, and he also started to sweat. What's wrong? Are you okay? Yum asked worriedly. I am okay. It's just a little hot. He quickly changed the topic and then asked, So, do you want me to call you? What is it again? Wani-chan. Call me that. Under the anticipation of Yum, Mizuto didn't say it immediately, but he started to think and then said, I don't mind. Really? She was so excited at that time. Yes, but I want you to give me something. Gee, I give you? I mean, it isn't fair if you ask me a request, but you don't give me something, right? As I have given up the right to become an older brother, it isn't fair for me to ask you to give me something. But I am much older than you. 
Yum pursed her lips and muttered in dissatisfaction, but she knew that he was correct. It wouldn't be fair for him if she didn't give him something. So, what do you want? As your one Chan, I don't mind following your little wish. Patting her chest confidently, it was as if she said, leave everything to one Chan. Mizuto wanted to laugh, thinking that this girl was so cute, so he said with a joking tone, then, one Chan, can you kiss your little brother? He kiss? Yum was startled that her face was so red. You can't? I mean, isn't it normal for the older sibling to give a kiss to the little sibling before sleeping? Still, he knew that he was joking, but if it could happen, then why not, right? But kissing. Watching her hesitant and troubled expression, Mizuto then apologized. Sorry, I was just joking before. You don't need to. It's okay. Huh. I mean, it's just a kiss, right? Why not? You are my little brother, so it is normal for the older to pamper the younger, right? Come on, let's kiss. She then sat by his side and was about to kiss him, but he stopped her. Stay still. I will take the initiative. Hearing those words, she pursed her lips, but she didn't complain and waited for him to kiss her. Mizuto knew that this was wrong, especially when he used the feeling of the previous Mizuto on Yum to deceive her, but at the same time, he also wasn't wrong since even if they had broken up, they still often met and talked to each other. However, she hardly gave him a good face as she often hummed and then looked away. Nevertheless, he knew that when they dated each other, they often kissed each other and even almost lost their first time at the same time. Still, even so, as she waited for the kiss on her lips, she only felt something warm on her forehead, and she saw him kissing her forehead instead of her lips. That's the kiss. Good night. She stared at him and couldn't look away. Her breathing became so heavy, and her eyesight became blurry. She wished to jump in his direction and kiss his lips obsessively, but she endured it as she didn't want to make the first move. He was stunned by this gaze, but he also wasn't passive, staring into her eyes, moving slowly as if asking her permission, but before he even moved, she pounced on him first, and they started to kiss each other. He stopped thinking, feeling helpless, before they enjoyed their reunion. Chapter 5. Having a stepsister is a good thing. What am I doing? As he ran in the morning, Mizuto wondered what they did last night. While they might not do it in the end, they kissed each other's lips slobbery and lewdly as if neither cared about anything. Moreover, their kiss was just natural, as they had done it many times before. Nevertheless, was this okay? After all, his father had just married her stepmother. Then, at night, when they started to live together, he and his stepsister started to kiss each other like a man and a woman instead of a stepsibling. Still, he wasn't a hypocrite as he enjoyed that kiss. The only problem was whether it was okay or not, and whether their parents could accept it or not since even if there was no law that disallowed step-siblings from marrying each other, their parents had just married each other after all. He knew that if they knew what they had done, they would definitely be surprised or... He shook his head and knew that they had to keep what they had done last night a secret from their parents. Still, he knew that Yim definitely wouldn't report something like this to their parents, so he could feel relief. If he was forced, then he might as well live alone as this was possible for him. Nevertheless, he put Yum's problem aside since he had to say the skills that he gained after becoming a merchant were more impressive than he had thought. Last night, after he became a merchant, he put one point on every active skill to understand them better. Initially, it should have been discount and overcharge that surprised him, yet that wasn't the case as identify and store were also two skills that he couldn't look down upon. The identify skill made him able to identify many things, and whenever he walked, he could see a panel of an introduction of a variety of things such as street, bike, house, etc. Still, this skill wasn't limited to non-living things, as he could also use it on himself and many people he saw while running. Frankly, as it was only a level one, there wasn't much that it could do, but somehow, he felt that this skill would be full of potential, especially when it reached a maximum level. Still, aside from the identify skill, the store skill also surprised him. If he made a comparison, the store was like online shopping. 
However, unlike the online shopping he knew, it was more developed, and as long as he bought something, it would be sent immediately. As this skill was only level one, the items sold in the store were something from the convenience store. There was a bottle of water, an onagirai, a fresh bento, and various other things. At the same time, he could also sell something at a fair price in the store. When he was in his room, he tried to sell his bed, but hurriedly stopped as he was afraid that it would be really sold to the store. It wasn't that he would be troubled if he sold his bed, as he could buy the new one in the store, but he was afraid that if he bought the new one, how could he explain it to his parents and Yume? In his opinion, when the store reached a maximum level, he could imagine that he could buy a fantasy item like those legendary weapons from the myth, such as Excalibur or Kusanagi no Tsuruji, which made him fall into a daze. As for brainwash, even if he didn't explain it, one could tell how amazing this skill was. Unfortunately, he never tried it since he was a bit afraid, considering that level one of this skill only enhanced one's emotions. If someone felt hatred toward him, then wouldn't this person wish to kill him? So, he might as well wait until the skill reaches a maximum level so he can manipulate someone's mind, like in a fantasy story or movie. Still, as he explained three active skills of the merchant, what about the rest, which was overcharge and discount? While he might say that the potential for identify and store might be above the overcharge and discount, it didn't mean those two skills were bad. Instead, they were still on a level of outrageousness. Yes, outrageous. Those two skills were really outrageous. He wasn't sure how many times he was going to say this, but this system was too cheating. The reason why he became a merchant was all due to his service business to make a thesis and capstone project for those who were in need. Still, maybe someone might be confused or have forgotten how the overcharge works, but it was a skill that allowed him to charge the customers 10% more than the original price, so when his service was about 200,000 yen, another 20,000 yen would be added to his pocket due of his overcharge skill. Meanwhile, the discount would give him a 10% discount whenever he or his store bought something. So, if he bought something for 100 yen, he would receive 10 yen of cash back. In other words, those skills gave him a passive income. An income that he would receive even without doing anything. Yet, saying that he didn't do anything might be too much, as he needed to maintain the business if he wanted to get more money from the overcharge. As for the discount, as long as he used the money, he would receive a cashback, so if he leveled up the skill to level 10, he would receive 100% of the return. It might not be wrong to say that he gained a perpetual income. When this skill reached a maximum level, he wouldn't lack money. Nizuto had to say that with all of those skills, he might be able to become either a hero or a demon king in this world. Still, what gave him another surprise was how he suddenly became a level 25. Yes, a level 25. Wasn't this too fast? After all, what did he do? If he had to think about something, the reason why he could level up so fast was all due to the kiss he shared with Yume last night, like how a player would gain more XP when they hunted down an elite or boss type of monster. Kissing his stepsister at night was a feat comparable to the two feats he mentioned above. With his current level, he gained more than 15 skill points, and along with the 10 skill points he gained before, he had a total of 25 skill points. However, as he has used 5 skill points, adding 1 point to every merchant skill, he only had 20 skill points left. Now, what should he do? As those points were enough to max out two of the active skills, he thought to max two of the skill active skills while giving the remaining points to the store, as he was curious what would it sell when he put more points on the skill. So, after a moment of thought, he decided to max discount and identity. Why? If he maxed the discount level, he would get 100% in the return. In other words, anything that he buys from now on will become free as the money he used to buy will return to his pocket. Meanwhile, for the identify, he felt that this skill definitely wasn't simple and there was a lot of potential to it. As he maxed out those two skills, he added the remaining two points to the store. While he wanted to check the store, he thought to try the identity first as it was the first skill which he maxed out. Then, when he tried it, 
He stopped thinking since the skill was just too shocking. Still, at this moment, he thought that having a stepsister was a good thing. Chapter 6 Shitty Little Brother I am home. Welcome home. Mizuta looked up and saw his stepmother was there, greeting him with a gentle smile. Did you just wake up, Yuni-san? Um. Yuni nodded with a smile. Did you just work out, Mizuto Kuen? How diligent. Still, as Mizuto had just finished his workout, his t-shirt stuck onto his body due to sweat, showing the shape of his faultless body. Watching her stepson, she could only sigh helplessly since it was quite hard to treat him as a child since all she could see on him was a man. It's just my habit. It's nothing special. Mizuto then showed a plastic bag in his hand. Oh, right. I just bought breakfast for all of us. Uh, really? I am sorry for the trouble. Yuni quickly approached Mizuto to help him. I will take care of the rest. You should wash your body, Mizuto Kuen. Thank you, Yuni-san. Mizuto didn't reject Yuni's offer and then went to the bathroom after he tried to use the identify skill on his stepmother. Name, Yuni Irido. Gender, female. Age, 37. Three sizes. While he didn't want to read it further as a man, it was impossible to ignore it, especially when everything important about his stepmother was written, such as whether she was healthy or not, her first experience, her experiences, and even further advice on how to develop their relationship. You and Yuni might be a stepson and a stepmother. Even so, there is no blood relationship between the two of you. If you are sincere and show your love to her, then she might reciprocate your feelings after you live with her. Mizuto didn't bother to read this information anymore. It's delicious. Where did you buy it, Mizuto? After Mizuto took a bath, everyone woke up, and Yuni also put the breakfast into bowls and plates. Their breakfast consisted of soybean milk, deep-fried dough sticks, and steamed buns. It was a simple Chinese breakfast, but even so, they tasted delicious, and it was quite rare for them to eat Chinese foods, especially in the morning. Now, the problem is, where did he buy a Chinese breakfast in Kyoto? If he had to answer, he bought it from the store, as a level 3 of the skill, which would make him able to buy food from famous restaurants in various countries. When he ran before, he took an interest in the Chinese breakfast, and he also wanted to check the power of the maximum level of discount. As expected, when his discount reached a maximum level, the money he used to buy something would be returned to him in full, so it was as good as he bought something for free. Yet, it didn't mean that he could buy anything since he needed an appropriate amount of money to buy the item he wanted to buy. Buying food was an easy thing for him as it was just below 1,000 yen, but buying some luxurious items or cars was a different thing. Nevertheless, with his 5 million yen of savings, he should be able to buy most of the things in this country except for the land or property in famous cities in this country, of course. Still, the discount aside, the store was different from what he had imagined. Maybe when it reaches a maximum level, I can buy anything. In this case, he wanted to buy a building, and even without the consent of the owner, he would be able to buy it instantly. This might be the true power of the store. Still, he could think about those matters later as he needed to answer his parents' questions first. When I ran before, I happened to find a new Chinese restaurant, so I checked it. I am glad that you like it. Still, you used your own money, right? I will repay you after this. While the breakfast tasted delicious, Yuni felt quite awkward to use her stepson's money. No, you don't need to. Otisan always gives me funds every month to take care of the household, and the money used for this breakfast was from that fund. Miniaki nodded and smiled, feeling satisfied with his son's reliability. Uh, did you take care of the household? Yuni was surprised. Yes, Miniaki nodded. I happen to be useless at this, and that's why I am grateful for him to take care of the matter of the house. That's amazing. Yuni was truly amazed by her stepson's dependability, but at the same time, she was sad since she knew that Mizuto had become mature because Mizuto lost his mother early. When she thought about this, she felt that she needed to compensate for the love that couldn't be given by Mizuto's real mother. The amazing one is Otisan since he is working hard for me. Being modest was one of his charming points. Moreover, being able to take care of the household wasn't something special and everyone could do it. Lastly, he didn't want his stepmother to have more than stepson affection toward him. While Miniaki smiled and was even happy with his answer, Yuni thought that she needed to become a mother figure for Mizuto. But Mizuto Kuen, as I am here, please rely on me, okay? While it might be hard for you to accept me for a while, I have become your mother after all. I might be working, but even so, please leave the matter of household to me. 
Mizuto felt helpless, but he knew that as a child without a mother, many people would pity him, and it was also the reason why the original Mizuto was quite reclusive. Still, he didn't want Yuni to force herself to become a mother figure for him. It wasn't that he didn't want a mother figure, but it was hard for him to see her as a mother, especially when Yuni was such a charming woman. So, he pretended to be helpless and said, To be honest, I took care of the household so I could get more pocket money, Yuni Obeisen. If you take my job, then my pocket money becomes less, right? Eh? Really? Miniaki was surprised and speechless. Um, I got a lot more pocket money due to this, Otisan. If you are worried about pocket money, how about I give you more? Yuni sighed helplessly. Thank you, Yuni-san. I love you. Jeez, you are so naughty. As the three had a warm conversation and joked together, Yum stared at Mizuto resentfully. Yum tore the meat bun cruelly, showing her far from calm emotion. Unlike him, who was all well and could talk with their parents while joking around, her mood was horrible. Not only was she unable to sleep last night, but she also wondered how she should interact with Mizuto after that kiss. She also wasn't sure what their relationship would turn into and how their parents would react if they knew what she and Mizuto had done in his room the previous night. Yet, when she was unable to sleep for the entire night, he slept well and even worked out in the morning. While she admitted that she was awed by his diligence since she didn't expect that he would run every morning. Moreover, she had to say the breakfast he bought tasted delicious. Still, did he really think nothing of their previous kiss? When she thought about this, she started to feel gloomy, and she also wondered what he felt toward her. Yet, her body became hot when she thought about their kiss, unlike before when they dated for the first time. She remembered their kiss was clumsy and chaste, yet now, she couldn't see that in his current kiss. His kiss was overbearing, as if trying to dominate her, yet at the same time, he was also gentle, tickling, seducing her to fall into him, which made her annoyed since her body wished to be with him. It was as if his existence itself was a sin for her, and she just couldn't erase him from her mind. Mizuto, who noticed Yum's stare, showed a gentle smile, causing her to look away with a blush. What was that? How cheeky! While blushing, Yum felt resentful since he was so calm even after their kiss last night, and even smiled warmly in her direction. However, when she glanced at her mother, her thoughts were quickly shrouded by anxiety. She might have enjoyed their kiss, but she knew her priorities. However, when she thought about visiting his room to talk with him, the voice of her mother almost made her slip from the stairs. Mizuto Kuin, are you going on a date? Yoon. Note, there is no official schedule for how much I will update the story, but I will probably update one or two chapters since it is quite tough to write two novels at the same time. Still, I try to enjoy it. Lastly, Marin Kitagawa is from Tokyo, and cosplay isn't so popular in Kyoto. However, if you have a work that you want to put inside the story, then please tell me. Depending on how suitable the story is, I might put that work inside the story. For now, it is only Mamahaha no Tsurego GA Motokano data, but I will add more work to the story, such as High Bike Euphonium. Chapter 7 My Stepsister is Too Ho Asterisk Newark. After having breakfast, Mizuto decided to leave as he wanted to check the power of the Identify, and he also needed to get something on this trip. However, when he was about to go out, he met his stepmother again. Are you going on a date, Mizuto Kuen? Yuni couldn't help but think so as she thought that her stepson was so handsome. After returning to his room, Mizuto changed his clothes with a white printed t shirt with an image of a tiger on the back, the small word tiger written on the right chest, and a beige color of loose ankle length pants. He also wore a black cap and was also about to wear his white Adidas country and green stripes. He appeared clean and sleek. Any mother-in-law who saw him would give him approval when they knew their daughter dated him, or they might even have a secret affair with him. Still, Yuni had expected this, but somehow, she felt a bit complex when she thought her stepson was about to go on a date. I am not going on a date. I don't have a girlfriend, after all. I am just going out for a bit to buy books. There was also something else that he wanted to do, but he wouldn't tell his stepmother as he wasn't sure how to explain it. Uh, is that so? Yuni somehow sighed in relief then asked curiously, but you don't have a girlfriend now, Mizuto Kuen? I did have a girlfriend before, but now I am single. When Mizuto was about to continue, he heard footsteps from behind and saw Yum, so he greeted her. Yum. Uh, Yum. Yum nodded, hesitating, and also wondered whether Mizuto was going to tell Yuni about their relationship. If so, 
then she needed to tell him that he shouldn't do that. Still, if possible, she wanted to follow him since that way she could talk to him. Mizuto looked at Yum and saw her smiling somehow. He could see that she was in a good mood, which made him wonder what made her smile so happily. Are you in a good mood or something, Yum? Yuni asked curiously. W-H what? Good mood? What do you mean, mom? Yum was startled, but Yuni said honestly, you have this big grin on your face now. Has something good happened to you? Yum was speechless, but she couldn't tell anyone that she felt happy to know that Mizuto didn't have a girlfriend and was still single, which meant that he never accepted anyone's confession during their graduation before. Still, Mizuto didn't bother to ask why Yum was in a good mood as he wanted to go out now. Then, I will leave first, Yum, Yuni-san. Hearing those words, Yum hesitated, but Yuni suddenly said, Wait, mizuto Kuin, if it isn't a problem, can you bring Yum with you? Bring Yum with me? Yes! Yuni nodded. It's her first time in this area, after all, so if possible, I want you to guide her around. She then showed a cute-like expression and asked timidly, Is that okay? If this wasn't his stepmother, then he might attack her. Still, he nodded and said, If she doesn't mind, then I am okay with it, but I might take a while to go back, you know? He then turned and looked at Yum. What do you think, Yum? Eh? Yum was startled, but then she nodded firmly. Okay, wait a moment. I will change my clothes first. She then ran to the second floor and went to her room to change her clothes as she wished to make him smitten with her charm. Don't run so suddenly. Yuni reminded Yum, but it was too late. Jeez, who this girl learned from. From you? Mizuto thought inwardly. Still, he took out his smartphone and checked the schedule of events that he wanted to visit. There were still a few days before school started, and he thought of testing many things since he knew if this was successful, then he would be living without being troubled by money. Is there something wrong, Yuni-san? He stopped his action as he noticed Yuni was staring at him. No, nothing. It might be only her imagination, but Yuni felt like her daughter seemed to have an interest in her stepson. However, she felt that it was normal for her daughter to have an interest, especially when they were the same age, but he appeared more mature, and he was also attractive. Did Yum somehow fall in love with Mizuto? Yuni thought about it, but she didn't really mind since she felt she could entrust her daughter to Mizuto. Still, she would be lying if she didn't feel complicated. By the way, Yuni-san. Yes. Is it okay for you to stay? Aren't you going to work? Uh, that's right. Yuni realized that she had wasted so much time. Then, see you, Mizuto Kuin. I will go back in the evening. Greetings, Yum, for me too. I love you. Leaving those words, she hurriedly left the house. Shaking his head, thinking that being a social animal was hard, Mizuto sat at the entrance of the house lazily as he checked his smartphone, and somehow, he thought of a better way to make more money. Well, let's make an account later. He might not be 18 years old, but it should be possible. Frankly, he wasn't sure how long he had been waiting, but he had been checking which companies were the best to register his account until he heard a voice from behind. Huh? Where's mom? She went to work earlier. I see. Yum thought that only the two of them were inside the house, so she couldn't help but think about many things in her mind, especially when she thought about what they did last night. He turned and couldn't help but stare at Yum. Unlike before, she had changed her clothes to a white short-sleeved blouse tucked inside under the high-waisted gray skirt that reached her ankle. She might not wear her usual tights, but her bare feet definitely weren't bad. They were white, smooth, and cute, but he knew he couldn't stare at them for so long. W.H. what? Yum became bashful and shy as she could feel his gaze on her body, which somehow made her body hot. No. She was afraid to become excited again since she knew she might not be able to control herself, especially when his gaze on her was just too damn exciting. You are cute. Nevertheless, he wondered whether she had changed into a white dress to match his white t-shirt, which was why he said that she was cute. Do not say something stupid. Co, come on. Trying to hide her loss of composure with a high tone, she walked hurriedly. Still, when she passed him, he could see a smile on her glossy lips that were lightly tinted with pink-colored lipstick, giving a different charm from the one he saw last night. So, Yum, wait for a moment. What's wrong? Yum turned and waited for him, wondering what he was going to say. You forgot something. I forgot something? When she felt confused, she saw him moving closer. While she was stunned and surprised, he still gave her time to think. Her heart was beating so fast, and she had almost lost her mind, 
but even so, she needed to remind him. We're in the entrance of the house. Her hissing voice clearly told him what they were about to do was inappropriate. It's okay. We're the only ones here now. His voice was as calm as ever as if trying to reassure her that it was going to be okay. Jeez, you are really. Yum bit her lower lip as her body quivered when she thought about what would happen after this, but she knew nothing could stop him, and she also didn't hate this forceful yet thoughtful side of him. Even so, she didn't want to appear eager, so she showed helplessness as if she had given up, moving her lips forward, waiting for something that she had anticipated. One more later. Chapter 8. Private transportation is better than public transportation. Jeez, you are too forceful. Yum complained as she applied her lipstick again. Sorry, sorry. Mizuto could only apologize lightly as he held a mirror so Yum could apply her lipstick perfectly. Still, he had to say, her lips tasted sweet. No more. Yum stared at him dangerously since she could see that he didn't have enough. I know. I know. It's good that you know. Yum smiled again and sighed, thinking that he really had changed before muttering. Your kiss is really different from before. What did you say? Nothing. Mizuto sighed and thought that a woman was really troublesome. Still, after she finished applying her lipstick again, they locked the door and left the house. Walking side by side, Yum stared at his side profile, being obsessed for a while. Still, as they walked, she noticed how casually he walked to the side where the vehicles were, protecting her as if it were nothing. Moreover, wasn't his scent so good? He smelled so good that she wanted to smell him even closer, but... Pervert. Why? She pouted, feeling aggrieved at being called a pervert by him. She knew that her act of smelling him like a dog might be wrong, but she was better than someone who loved to kiss her lips, right? yum -san, we're in the public. I don't have an exhibitionist hobby. Me too. I don't have such a hobby. Also, I am not a pervert. Hmm. What is it? If you have something to say, then tell me. Yum felt that this bad guy was thinking something bad again. No, it's just I don't really mind if you are a pervert. Yum was stunned in place, stopped her steps, and asked cautiously, Re really? Really, but let me remind you that I am really not into an exhibitionist, okay? I am not a pervert. Shuh, we're in the public. Don't shout like that. What if someone hears our conversation? Yum felt even aggrieved, thinking that this guy really had become a bully. Still, there was something that she wanted to ask, say, are you going to tell mother about our relationship before? Mizuto stopped his steps and then stared at Yum. He didn't answer immediately, and instead of an answer, he gave her a question. Do you want me to tell her? I. Yum hesitated. While she wished to announce their relationship, especially so no one would approach him and she could monopolize him, she knew she couldn't be as selfish as before. After all, their situation was special. They had become a step-sibling. While there was no rule that step-siblings couldn't marry each other, her mother just gained her happiness, and she didn't want to be the reason why that happiness was destroyed. With such a reason, there was no doubt she was such a good girl. So, if she had the power to read Mizuto's mind, she might beat this guy up for thinking something strange to her mother. Let's keep everything a secret. I know. Yum looked at him and asked with a frown, are you okay with this? Staring at Yum, who kept staring at him, Mizuto felt speechless and helpless. If he said that he wasn't okay with it, he would appear possessive and troublesome. But if he said that he was okay, she would say that he was cold. Frankly, being with a woman was so troublesome. No, I just respect your choice. Still, as a man, he needed to have two or three tricks. Caressing her hair gently, he said those words softly since he knew that the decision she had made wasn't easy, especially when he knew how crazy the mind of this girl was. Yum pursed her lips and felt like tears were about to run down her cheeks, so she quickly looked away and lightly swept away his hand that caressed her hair. Why you will mess up my hair? Even if her mouth said so, her body was honest as she enjoyed his touch. Still, they didn't stay in the same spot too long as they didn't want to be watched by many. Nevertheless, it was impossible for them to avoid the gaze of people as whenever they walked, one or two would glance in their direction. Yum pouted when she saw many girls and women staring at Mizuto, so she moved closer, so close that their bodies almost stuck to each other, but this action almost pushed him to the road. Mizuto stared at this stupid girl in silence before he held her hand firmly so she wouldn't mess around. Don't walk carelessly. We're in the middle of the street. What if we hit someone? Um, big and hot, she thought. His palm was different from before. 
He had grown, and it felt so strange when they held each other since this feeling was different from before. Yet, she didn't hate it. Instead, his hand gave her a sense of security as it could hold her everything. By this point, she didn't care about the gazes of the others around him and just enjoyed their quiet walk. To reach their destination, they needed to either ride a private vehicle, ride on public transportation, or use a taxi. He didn't have a private vehicle, and a taxi would empty his wallet. While he didn't lack money, he didn't want to use his money carelessly. Still, he didn't really like to use public transportation. In anime or manga, Using transportation might seem common and even appear romantic, especially when a boy and a girl stand beside each other, side by side, shyly, yet eagerly. However, the reality couldn't work that way since when you entered public transportation, you would be pushed by many people like a can of sardines. Moreover, not everyone smelled good, and many had a shit-like body odor. Even worse, sometimes someone crazy might appear, so he didn't like public transportation that much. As they walked, a motorcycle passed over the street, which made him stop and look at it curiously. Many streets in Kyoto were small, and having a car was troublesome as he also needed to think about the car park. If he didn't have it, he needed to pay for it, and it wasn't cheap to pay for the parking, but a motorcycle was different since it was small and could be easily parked into his house. Their house also had a garage, and it was possible to keep a car, but his father didn't buy it. Yet, he also understood that in Kyoto, where the transportation facilities were complete, it wasn't necessary to keep a car. Unless one lived in the countryside, it was more convenient to use a private vehicle. What's wrong? I am thinking of getting a motorbike. Huh? Really? Yum was surprised and asked, do you have an interest in motorbikes now? Well, it seems more comfortable than getting into a jam-packed train, and my age is enough to get a driving license. Hmm. I will take you to drive when I get one later. Okay. Yoon was also quite curious about his plan to get a motorbike. So, what kind of motorbike are you planning to get? Do you have enough money? Will Mini Akio Jaisen allow you to get a motorbike? It should be okay. As they entered the train, the seat was full, so they couldn't help but stand up. Mizuto chose the corner where he let Yum stand in front of him and just right in front of the door so she didn't need to face the others, and he could protect her from the crowd. Yum smiled when she saw this and felt relaxed by his side. Even with a crowd around them, when he stood before her, she knew she would be okay. As for the money, I should have enough to get one. I have been curious. Are you working a part-time job or something? When Mizuto was about to answer, he felt his buttocks were touched and grabbed tightly, which made his lips twitch. What's wrong? No, nothing. Yet, the truth was he wasn't okay as he was molested inside the train. Chapter 9. My Creed this was why Mizuto didn't like public transportation, but as a commoner, what could he do except be ready to beat up the molester? He was ready to raise his foot, ready to kick this molester, but he stopped when he realized his molester was such a mature beauty. While he wasn't sure what her age was, from her appearance, she should be in her late twenties or early thirties in a business suit. Her wavy brown hair was about her shoulders, and she even had ringlets, making her appear like an elite working lady. Yet, what attracted him the most was the two exaggerated hills on her chest. Even though they were hidden by her working suit, it was impossible to hide those two masses. They were so intimidating. Were they real? Still, their eyes met, and she showed a charming smile toward him. What's wrong? Yum asked in concern. What did we say again? After being molested by such a mature beauty, he forgot the conversation he had with Yum. Nevertheless, he found the name of her molester and all of her information from the identify. Her name is Oatake Nami, huh? We were talking about whether you took a part-time job or not, but are you sure you're okay? Yum felt that there was something wrong as it was rare to see him distracted. I am okay. While he wanted to molest the molester back as it was, a tooth for a tooth, an eye for an eye, was his motto. If she molested him, he would pull her into the hotel. However, the problem was that Yum was standing in front of him. Still, the situation worsened when she noticed a hardening bulge within his pants. You really? She was so helpless and embarrassed. How could it become like this? Sorry. He could only apologize as he couldn't tell the real reason. Yum sighed, then used her bag to hide the mass destruction of the weapon under his pants. Can you calm it down? Still, she didn't blame him as much as she thought that it was partly her fault that everything had become like this. It should be possible when we arrive. I asked, I asked that so? Yum tried to look away, but like a magnet of opposite poles that attracted each other, her eyes were attracted to his erection. What was that reaction? 
Or do you want to help me? He asked jokingly. Don't say something stupid. She hissed with a blush on her face, trying to appear fierce, yet she was so cute. But well, I am not working a part-time job. I opened a business. Huh? Do you have a business? I do. What kind of business? Yum asked curiously. You will see it soon. Hmph. What are you pretending to be mysterious for? However, Mizuto knew that he had piqued her curiosity, and at this moment, she must be thinking about what kind of business he did. Even though they had been separated, he knew that she was a mystery maniac, and it was also a mystery book that made the two of them become one. Still, as for his business of making a thesis or a capstone for a university student, he wouldn't say it since it was troublesome, and he was afraid for her to make a commotion. However, as Yume kept glancing at him, wondering what kind of work her former boyfriend did, the molester, Nami Oetake, had already stood behind him, back by back, as she continued to rub his buttocks and thighs. Hey, do you want to meet after this? Her voice was low and hot and straight into his ear. Mizuto fell silent and felt a little helpless. Using his identify, he knew that there was no camera on this train and he was just an ordinary man, so... Eh? Nami was startled when she felt a hand reach into her plump and soft thigh that was wrapped in black tights. She turned and smiled when she saw that it was his hand. Yet, as she smiled, she realized that this young man wasn't as simple as he seemed. She quickly bit her lower lip, tried to hold her M.O. asterisk N, and held the hand hold tightly so she wouldn't fall due to her weak legs. Still, as if oblivious, Mizuto had a game with Yume, talking about where their destination would be as it was related to the job that he had. Aquarium? Do you want to go to the aquarium? Yume, let's go next time together. We might not have enough time to go to the aquarium now. Was this a date? A smile subconsciously appeared on her beautiful face as she nodded shyly. Um... Still, as the two exchanged a sweet youth of love, Nami's body shook several times before panting like a dog. Yum would never think that her former boyfriend, who was also her stepbrother, would be so brutal as he never gave this molester mercy. Even though Nami's body was sensitive, he kept playing with her as if she was his toy. Being treated like this made her heart feel ashamed yet also excited as she fell deeper into depravity. Yet, when she wanted to exchange their contact, she thought that they could meet again as it was her first time realizing that her body could feel such pleasure in such a messed up way. However, when she was about to talk, the train stopped and the door was opened. By the way, Yume, can I stop at the bathroom first? What's wrong? It seemed like I had touched something dirty on the train. I need to wash my hands first. Eh? Really? What did you touch? Yume asked, but Mizuto only said, I am not sure but I also need to go to the toilet too. Then, go. It won't be funny if you wet your pants. He only rolled his eyes, ignoring her joke. Only if she moved closer, she might notice his hand was quite wet, seemingly covered in a vicious crystal liquid, and had a strange lewd smell. H and H. Meanwhile, Nami wanted to chase after him, exchanging their contacts, but the door stopped and her legs were too weak to move. Nevertheless, when the door closed, their eyes met, and she could see the contempt and disdain on his face that looked at her like trash, which aroused her more. Washing his hand, Mizuto sighed helplessly as he didn't exchange contact info with that woman. Even though that woman might be a pervert, she was no doubt such a beauty. Moreover, he also wanted to check whether those things on her chest were real or not. Yet, if there was a small problem, it would be her identity. According to the information he gained from the identify skill, that woman was married, which made him wonder whether she sought after excitement in her dull-like marriage, but even so, he wouldn't show mercy. If someone messed up with him, he would mess them up twice. Even if the woman was single, had a boyfriend, or even married, as long as she wasn't his stepmother, he wouldn't treat them differently. This was his creed. He definitely didn't feel ho asterisk Newark. Still, if the original Mizuto existed, that guy might stare at him with dead eyes, considering the original Mizuto's personality and all. After he walked out of the toilet, he met Yum, who was waiting for him before the two of them walked out together from the station. So, can you tell me where we are going now? Yum felt so itchy and curious about where they would go. Be patient, okay? We are about to arrive. While she was dissatisfied with his answer, she followed him obediently. Still, when they had arrived at their destination, she really couldn't hide their surprise as she looked at him. This place is? Yes, a flea market. This was his destination and a place for him to test the power of the identify. In this story, 
Oh, it take Nami's character and history are different from the original, okay? Chapter 10, Flea Market. In Kyoto, there were many temples and shrines that opened a flea market for the public. In that place, many people could come to sell and buy many unique things, whether it was food, kimono, or even garbage. Everything could be found on the flea market. Yum watched as many people came in and out as they walked around, checking the items sold by vendors who displayed their items under the stall. She looked at the scene in a novel since it was the first time she had come to this kind of place. Are you going to sell something here? Yum asked since she thought that Mizuto was going to open a business in this flea market, but what was he going to sell? After all, he didn't seem to bring anything except for his clothes, wallet, and smartphone. I am not going to sell, but I am going to buy something. Buy? What are you going to buy? I can't say for sure. Let's see after we enter. Okay. Yum nodded and thought that Mizuto really had changed. If it was in the past, she knew that he would avoid this type of crowded place, but now, he has taken the initiative, which made her even more curious about him, wondering why many changes had happened to him. They had been separated for a year and had also dated for a year, but in that span of time, he became so much different from her memory. What's wrong? Mizuto asked in confusion. Nothing. Yum felt complex since she felt like she was the one that was only attracted to him, making her feel like she had lost. But then when she thought how he took the initiative to kiss her, hold her hand, and also show such a reaction she felt better for some reason since she knew he liked her. So, there was nothing to worry about, right? Mizuto looked at Yum strangely and checked her by using the identify skill, feeling weird as she wasn't in her period, but then he shrugged her shoulders and checked various items sold by the vendors within the market. Yum followed him obediently, holding his hand as she was afraid that he might get lost. Nevertheless, she also looked around curiously since it was her first time. There were many unique things, from cute western dolls, old books, colorful plates, strange masks, vintage items, and even broken potteries. Is that a broken pottery? Yes. Does someone buy something like that? You might be surprised that there are so many people in the world. There were many things in the world that existed outside of their understanding, like how he couldn't imagine that there was such a s asterisk x y, beautiful and mature married woman who could become a molester. Is that a postcard? Standing by his side, Yum looked at Mizuto, who held an old postcard in his hands, but that wasn't the only one, as there was a box filled with many old postcards inside, which made her wonder who would buy such a thing. After walking for a while, they stopped at the vendor under the big tree that sold old books from domestic to international. Yum thought that Mizuto would check the books since she knew how much he loved to read, but it seemed he was more interested in the old postcards, which confused her. Yes, who will buy such a thing? Yum was in doubt. The value of something is different from one person to another. Mizuto didn't get impatient or angry at Yum's question and explained to her patiently. It's like the mystery book that you love. In another person's eyes, it is just like any other book instead of something that you love the most. I see. Yum nodded. But isn't this interesting? Mizuto chuckled when he read the postcard. We can communicate with each other instantly with chat applications or an email, but people in the past need to wait for a while until their letter is accepted. I can't imagine that. If someone couldn't read the chat that she sent in at least 10 minutes, she started to get worried, but people in the past used to wait a few days, which made her think that they were really patient. Still, as they looked at the old postcards one by one, they couldn't help but laugh at them as the contents of the postcards were kind of funny. Oh, right, Yum. Do you know the shortest letter in the world? Huh? Is there such a thing? Yes, it's from a famous writer, Victor Hugo. While Yum often reads books, it is limited to mystery books, and she is different from Mizuto, who keeps many books. What does the letter say? Well, he was worried about the sales of his book, so he sent a letter to the publisher that only had a question mark. Then, what happens? Then, the publisher sent back a letter with just an exclamation mark. Yum smiled. I can tell that his book sold a lot. Well, he is a legendary French writer, but you know, it is because Hugo and the publisher had such a close relationship, one symbol was enough for them to understand each other. I see, so that's the world's shortest letter. But don't you feel that this story is like us? Huh? What do you mean? I mean, at the entrance before, you know that I want. Don't say such a stupid thing to the public. Yum blushed and closed his mouth tightly, feeling embarrassed, but at the same time, was happy as he told her that they knew each other well. He might have changed, but even so, she still knew him well. 
However, if there was something that worried her, she wondered why he became more perverted. By the way, what is the book that he wrote? His book is quite thick. Do you want to read his book? Why not? It seems quite interesting. There should be one of his books in my room. You should come to my room later. Their understanding of each other was high. Even with such a subtle message, Yoom knew what kind of plan he had when she entered his room at night, but she didn't reject him and even anticipated it. Excuse me, how much is that plate for? Huh? Are you going to buy a plate? Yoom thought that Mizuto was going to buy books, but somehow, he decided to buy a plate. Mizuto looked at her and put his finger before his lips, telling her to be quiet. Yoom pursed her lips, but she followed his words and looked at the plate that interested him. The plate had a gentle sea blue color with a Christmas-like design on it. It's 100 yen each. Hearing the price, Mizuto didn't change his face. Only he frowned and asked, it's expensive. I will buy all of them. Can you make it cheaper? Yum was surprised that Mizuto was going to buy so much, but she still remembered his message telling her to be quiet, so she didn't say anything. You're going to buy all of them? Well, if that's the case, I will make it 50 yen each. I will take them then. Thank you very much. The vendor was happy that Mizuto bought all the 10 plates that were displayed on the table. All 10 plates with similar gentle sea blue colors and various different Christmas pictures were bought by Mizuto for 500 yen. When the transaction was completed, they didn't waste their time and left. Why did you buy so much? Is there something special about those plates? Yum asked curiously. While the pictures of the plates were so unique and lovely, she felt like he bought too much. All of them are the Royal Copenhagen Christmas plates. One of them can fetch 20,000 yen to 30,000 yen. W.H. what? Yum was shocked, and then she realized something. Then, did you? Mizuto laughed and said, I made a lot of money. Those plates that could be sold for 20,000 yen to 30,000 yen each were bought with 50 yen each. He made a lot of profits. Yum fell in silence, but she didn't blame him since she knew that it was the fault of the vendor for not knowing the value of those plates. At the same time, she was amazed by his knowledge and wittiness, but she didn't feel surprised since she knew that his rank had been number one for the entire year, and she had never been able to defeat him a single time during their third year. So this is how you get your money? Yum asked speechlessly. Mizuto only smiled and didn't say anything. Yum pouted, but in her heart, she was amazed by him. Nevertheless, due to her competitive nature, she kept asking him what was that and what was this. His broad knowledge surprised her and made her move even closer to him, holding her hand tighter, stickier like she wanted to tell everyone in this flea market that this man was his. It wasn't until he suddenly stopped at a certain vendor that he bought an item again. This time, he bought an old calligraphy for 150 yen before he left with a smile. What is it this time? How much can it be sold? Yum quickly asked when they left the vendor, but this time, she asked quietly as she was afraid that their conversation would be heard. At that moment, she acted like a robber who had just stolen a noble house. Mizuto was speechless and lightly flicked her forehead. Ouch! Yum quickly covered her forehead as she looked at him with grievance. Don't act like a thief. I am not doing anything bad. Yum pursed her lips, but she didn't say anything. But for lunch, do you want to eat a yakiniku or an eel? With that question, Yum knew that Mizuto had made a lot of money. To make it easier to understand, 100 yen equals one dollar.